Hi guys, hello. Uh, today we'll talk about German taught program versus English taught program. And I'll not get into the very details of which program, where, which city and all that kind of stuff. I'll very specifically talk about how you should rationalize your decision. How should you make your decision? And you would find a lot of advisors, a lot of people who would tell you that, you know, you should definitely go for a German taught program. You can do a C1 language exam, and then you can find a job there, which is all true. Uh, but is it the most uh, smart thing to do as of today? And I think you really need to look at the reality of global market. So first of all, we look at reality of the global market. And the second thing we look at is uh, the time comparison. So whether you should invest learning C1, which may take up to two to three years, uh, whether you should spend time there or you should spend time doing something else. And number three really is, uh, is something which I would want to talk about is, you know, whom you should take advice from and what kind of advice is good, what kind of advice is bad. So three things we'll cover. The first thing is, again, the reality of the market. Uh, you really need to know uh, what is happening where. Uh, the second thing is, the time, what is the best use of your time next two, three years, two years, three years. And number three is like, what kind of advice you would want to go for. So the number one thing is the reality. The reality of the market is that China is almost as big an economy as US. So if you look back and you should compare for yourself, just Google it, uh, how big is Chinese GDP versus American GDP versus German GDP. German GDP is anywhere between three to four trillion. Indian GDP is let's say less than three trillion. And both China and US are above 15 trillion and soon China will catch up with US. Now, how does it matter for your decision on German versus uh, English taught program in Germany? Well, 10 years back, you know, it would be nice to learn German, go to Germany and so on. So things were different. There were more jobs, there were more opportunities. And still, I would say Germany is a good country to go to because the rule of law, you know, you have much more stable life. You have very, very clearly set out legal processes and everything. Uh, but if you think about it, a lot of people are moving out of Germany. And the reason is that the taxes are very high. So you would find a lot of business people are moving to Eastern Europe, like countries like Romania, etc. cetera. Um, or you would see that people are moving to other low tax countries. So recently, for example, Italy has um, come up with a tax plan for educated people where if you move to Italy, you only pay tax on 30% of your income. So if you move to Milan, which is, uh, which is part of Lombardy in Northern Italy, you would pay taxes only on 30% of your income. So in Germany, if you're earning 120,000 euros, then you would maybe earn in your pocket, maybe 70,000 maximum euros. That's what you will take home. Um, and if you earn the same amount of money in Milan, then you would pay only 15,000 euros is taxes and all other kinds of social security. So the amount of money you pay to the social system is increasing in Germany as the aging population is increasing. So the global situation is this, that the, the economies in China, in Southeast Asia are developing and therefore the attractiveness of olden Europe or old country as it's called um, is not as high it's reducing and also because of the taxes and everything, <clears throat> it's decreasing. If you compare, for example, San Francisco, uh, where I was in 2018 um, at one of the Tesla plants, an interesting place, a lot of opportunity. Yes, the taxes are higher, but then you get a lot of opportunity to, to grow. So if you go to a market like Silicon Valley, San Francisco, Seattle area in the US, then obviously you are happy, you should be happy to pay a higher Californian tax because you get to meet people who are working at a global scale. Or, for example, if you go to China, in Shanghai, I was there for like three to eight months, um, different years. And if you go to Shanghai, Shanghai is more like a global city, like New York used to be 1990s, if you have ever seen the Friends, Friends uh, serial. Um, and if you can relate to that. So there are global cities coming up, Singapore, Hong Kong. Hong Kong was maybe 10 years back, uh, but Singapore is super important now in the global scene. Shanghai is super important in the global scene. Uh, San Francisco is super important in the global scene. Even Bangalore is getting important in the German scene, uh, in, the, in the global scene. And Berlin is also important in the German scene. So you have to look at which countries are growing. You have to look at which industries are growing. So which countries are growing, you can Google it. I'm telling you, 
China is growing, US is growing, parts of US is growing. Um, and also to some extent, Germany is growing, but parts of Germany is growing and part of it is not growing. Now, so that is about the countries which are growing. Then the second thing which you should ask yourself is what kind of industries are growing. So it's, a, it's mostly artificial intelligence, internet of things, robotics, biotechnology, all these industries are growing. So even if you're a marketing guy, you would want to be a marketing guy for an IT company or marketing guy for an AI company rather than being a marketing guy for let's say ITC or a, a food company. So there is a lot of innovation happening next 10 to 20 years would be a lot about innovation. So I had a manager one, you know, a very smart guy uh, in one of the companies I worked for in the States, in US, who used to say, and I'll, I'll say it in plain Hindi, which is, uh, either the jockey is good or the horse has to be good. So either the wave on which you're riding, and I'm telling you this is from my personal experience also, either the wave has to be good. So if you are planning your career, you need to look at your next 10 years seeing, okay, which industries are growing? Either the horse, either the ghoda is good or the jockey is good. And if both are good, then it's even better. So look, look out for that, right? And then um, let's move to Germany now. And within Germany, there are pockets which are growing and there are pockets which are not growing. So you have to understand, and I'm telling you again and again, if you don't understand this, you will pay a huge price over a period of time because somebody is telling you come to Germany and get into a German thought program. That is not the best way to do it. That is just a foolish way of doing it because you really do not understand the geography of Germany, which industries are growing, which industries are not growing. And the new age industry is growing in Berlin. You see the Tesla plant, the Tesla, Tesla, if you don't know, it's the largest EV manufacturer, electric vehicle manufacturing company in the world right now. So they are coming up near to Berlin. So a lot of technology stuff is happening close to Berlin. And Zwickau, Zwickau is in Eastern Germany, where Volkswagen, the largest, one of the largest global car manufacturing companies is coming up with their largest EV manufacturing plant. So that's all in Eastern Germany. The, if you look at Western Germany, the areas around Cologne, Dusseldorf, blah, blah, you know, all that. Um, this was maybe 70, 80 years back important to the global economy because there was a lot of coal mining in this area and a lot of industry was there. So if you look at those areas, um, then I would say, well, fine. Uh, the job opportunities are not growing there. The people are getting older and you will find a lot of competition. Let's say you are 22, 25 years, 27, 28 years of uh, age. And then you go to these areas, you would find a lot of competition, which is unrealistic to, to fight against because you have a 45 year old person who speaks German, who is German and who can perform the job better than you. So why would somebody hire you? Uh, so the movement of people from Eastern Germany to Western Germany and vice versa has not happened as much in Germany as the German government has had expected. So within Germany, the areas and the industries to look out for are all the new age industries. So for example, artificial intelligence, Berlin, IT, Berlin, e-commerce, Berlin, electric vehicles, Eastern Germany, Zwickau, you know, more towards Leipzig, Dresden, and so on. So that is important to keep in mind because you are making a career decision for the next 10 years and you can't just make it on, no, no, I will study in German, I'll learn C1 and then I'll become a, um, you know, a master of German. First of all, let me tell you, nobody becomes a master of German in two years. Even if you have done C1, there will be 70 to 80% of I can tell you this uh, with my 10 plus years of experience in Germany, even if you complete your C1, let me repeat it. Even if you complete your C1 German, you will not be at par for high-end consulting jobs. You will not be at par on their playing field, all right? So let's just, um, let me quickly show you a very important thing, which is LinkedIn. I don't know how many of you actually know LinkedIn, but I should, uh, I should, I just, you know, pulled out a few jobs for you guys so that you really understand what kind of, uh, you know, people when you, when they scare you saying there are no English speaking jobs in Germany, that is just, uh, I don't know which world they live in, <laughs> but, but the things are changing, things are changing, things are changing as the reality. So we are still in section one. This is a long video. Yeah. So the first section is about reality. The second section is about the time investment and the third section is about whom you should take an advice and what kind of advice you need. 
these three things are important if you really want to succeed in life. The first one, I told you which industries, which countries are growing, you need to keep an eye on that. Even if you're a marketing person, you go for marketing in AI. Do not go for marketing in selling soaps and, and FMCG kind of stuff. So let's quickly look at, and I pulled out some of the jobs. Um, so people say that you will only find IT jobs, like that is super foolish. Uh, you know, if you go to LinkedIn, you will really quickly figure out that there is a section which is called jobs section. And then you can find out um, the jobs which, which are active in Germany. And there are a lot of jobs in, in Germany which are active. And this one, I pulled it out. Uh, so this is some company, I don't know the company. Um, but you can actually do some, you know, search for yourself. Look at this job. You will work with engineers, product managers. This is a job for being a pro project manager. And the most important part comes in the end, which is you are fluent in English. German proficiency is a plus, but not required. Repeat it. You are fluent in English. German proficiency is a plus, but not required, guys. Come on. I mean, in Germany, there are so many jobs right now which are coming up where you don't need to have a German skill. The people who are telling you, okay, I'll comment in the section. I'll comment it in the third, third section. So the first section is about reality. I'm sharing the reality, industry, country, and then few jobs I'll show you. This job is called um, called head of growth, fintech startup. They are they are asking for a strong track record in fintech. They are not asking for a German skill, and um, they are also giving you stocks. So if you look at this line, it's not just about a salary package. They are even giving you stocks, which means that it's an important position, All right? You need to have obviously experience in fintech. So the new industries, AI, fintech, robotics, that is where you want to be. And then the language is not that much of a problem because then you will focus on what you know, what you contribute, and then you can go up as much as you want. All right, guys. So a lot of this is becoming international again. I mean, Germany was uh, maybe very German language heavy economy. And I would still say that it partly is but it is changing very fast because there are a lot of international companies coming because the German market is big. Plus Germany is losing significance. You know, German economy, you need do one thing and I'll not do it for you, but do it for yourself. German economy, GDP divided by China economy, GDP. 1980, 1990, 1990, 2000, 2010, 2020. You will see that the Chinese economy is now six times that of German economy. So there are other economies which are growing very fast. And therefore these new, new countries, new areas of growth are pulling German businesses out of their slumber. They are pulling German business people out of their only German, only German kind of thinking. Only German, only German kind of thinking worked in the past, it's not going to work in next 10 to 15 years because next 10 to 15 years is all about artificial intelligence. It's all about the new things. It's all about um, robotics and all that kind of stuff. So uh, if they have to attract the best talent in the world, they really have to push for English speaking jobs. That is really important for their economy, right? So let's look at a sales manager job. Obviously, if you have to do a sales manager job, you have to sell to Germans, then you would need to know German, most of the cases. But then let's look at head of growth and business development job. And this was quite interesting because this is a job by, you know, posted in Moonbase. Um, you guys can look at Moonbase and then you will realize how interesting Moonbase is as a company. But I'll, um, I'll not get into the details. All the job description is in English, guys. Everything is in English. Come on. Who is telling you that, you know, you need to, do, to know German to be doing a German job? Germany, there are so many jobs in English, which you can crack if you know your skill set is good.
your skill set is in the new economy not in the old economy in old economy like mechanical engineering i agree you know german it's better but if you do not and i'm not saying that you should not learn german but do not learn german for your career point of view learn it so that you can you know buy stuff on the sh- in the grocery store or go to the hospital for that b1 level is sufficient uh, so i'm not a big proponent of saying you know you can only make a life in germany because you know german i mean people who proclaim this are sitting somewhere in romania or somewhere else uh, telling you that you should learn german while they are doing most of their business in english so so guys um really i need to focus on what is in it for you to learn german so that is one so which is reality you know which industries are growing which countries are growing what kind of jobs are there i mean this is a super cool job if you read it um it has a theme you will become manager you will become a big manager big boss earning a lot of money and you do not need to know german so there are a lot of these jobs you can look it up on linkedin there you will find mix of jobs most of the jobs will be in german for old economy for new economy right now there is a big shift happening big shift big shift there is a big shift happening from english from german speaking jobs excuse me to english speaking jobs and you need to be uh looking out for that all right so that's the first thing the second thing is the time to time to get c1 in german and that is an interesting one um how long does it take to master let's look at cora um so this is the second section now the first section we talked about the opportunities i am of the opinion that you should look for the industry of future not look for the industry of past and therefore um, So here is a guy who's a German guy with very little background I completed A1 A2 B1 in 3 months I then spent months studying before B2 Okay interesting so that gives you some perspective I think 1 year would be more than enough to reach B1 Okay good 1 year and uh, nobody else has responded to this not an interesting question to ask google but um i have spoken to lots and lots of um german teachers of late and most of them say that while you can clear the exam now listen carefully you can clear the exam of c1 language but it doesn't mean that you will stay at the c1 proficiency for very long because you know before the exam you will crack learn a lot of things and then you will forget so typically to clear the exam you will need dedicated 1 to 2 years and if you really want to do it do it in india because in germany it's going to be really expensive unless your university provides for it so even if you reach c1 level you will never be able to do a job of a high stature of a high stature in germany in german you would always fall back on english because that's where your strength would come so i would if i were you i was planning my career i would really look at the industries which are growing and i would say okay for these industries do i need german because you know even if you study in germany nobody is asking you to stay in germany you can go to uk right after a lot of students do that actually if you have the right skills german universities are well recognized in uk you can study in 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 germany and then you just find a job in uk not a bad idea right uk you get better in little bit better salaries you get english speaking environment and you don't have to go through a two year one to two year of um grueling learning of german which you'll forget in 6 months trust me i have forgotten a lot of it so yeah look at this um this is somebody answering basically i have to learn german c1 blah blah and the answer is genuine c1 look i think getting to a genuine c1 level in that space of time is pretty ambitious so you know because you have to study a lot of other things also it's not just german you will study plus 
um, you have to study um, whole soul, dedicate yourself 12 hours a day to reach C1 in one year. You can do it. It's not impossible, but is it going to be useful? You spend one year learning artificial intelligence or something other and then that, that is going to be more useful. Even for people who come for business, uh, you better learn marketing intelligence, you better learn marketing analytics, you better learn things of future, not things of past. So number one, reality. Reality, as I said, or the market is changing. Uh, number two, the time to get to C1 is not just one year to two years. It'll you know, evolve over a period of time your German skills will uh, deteriorate because um, assuming you will work in an English speaking environment, even if you clear German with C1, the chances of your English uh, taking over at work is much, much higher. Uh, and do not assume that you will become a partner in McKinsey. I can tell you, you will not become a partner in McKinsey uh, being an Indian in Germany. You can do that in Belgium. You can, I know people in Belgium who have become partners in McKinsey and some other big consulting firm, firms, uh, but you can't do that in, in Germany. It's going to be extremely difficult uh, unless you come from a technology background, unless you come from an extremely strong technology background. So that is, um, that is about the time. So spend time on learning skills of the future. Remember this picture always, the, let me jockey on the horse. Let's let's quite quickly do that. So this is the image you have to keep in mind. Whenever you think about this video, think about this. Pick the right horse. You are on the top, right? You're not the guy on the bottom. It's the job of the horse to take you forward. It's the job of the industry which you are picking to take you forward. Do you think in next 10 years, is it wise to sit on a horse uh, which is called coal industry. Coal industry is going to be dead in the next five years. There will be no coal. Well, there will be coal, but it will not be used for anything. So pick the right industry, pick the right horse. Super important, more important than anything else. Um, Python is also a language. German is also a language. English is also a language. Pick your language carefully. Now, the third piece of advice is again, it's a little bit of a critique. Yeah, um, I, I get that. I mean, uh, I get a lot of, let me quickly. So whom you should take advice from, right? So, I mean, what did we talk about? We talked about, um, we talked about the reality of the market. We talked about the time, how you can better use your time. And now the question is, is it making more sense for you to to, to rely on, um, on an advice from somebody who's not even working in German? Ask yourself. So whom I should take advice from? I should take advice from somebody who's, uh, who's not even um, not doing business, not even doing his job in German. Ask anybody who's giving you advice that you can do a job in German, in Germany, how many years he has worked in Germany in German jobs. Again, somebody who's giving you advice, who has worked in Germany, apparently, who's telling you German taught program, German taught program, C1, life is good, life is chill, do a job in German, do a job in German, do a job in German. Guys, how many years he has worked or she has worked in German, in German language. So please be very critical. Uh, please be very critical. Um, I cannot stress this enough. A lot of students make this mistake. A ton of students make this mistake. Don't make this mistake. You really need to know whom you are taking advice from. You should always take advice from people who are working in Germany, in German language. If they tell you, go for a German taught program, go for it. If you're taking advice from somebody who's doing his or her business, his or her work in English and they have found all kinds of shortcuts to, to reach you using smart marketing, then you need to be careful. So three things we talked about, reality of the market is changing, 
compare the GDP of different countries, compare how China has been growing, compare how IT sector, artificial intelligence, robotics is going to change the world in the next 10 years. You have uh, this little thing uh, called smartphone, which was non-existent 20 years back. You know, there will be so many things which will be non-existent today, which will come up in the next 10 to 20 years. If you would have made your career in you know, app building or marketing smartphones, et cetera, you would have done much better than marketing soaps. So think about what is the horse, keep that picture in mind, horse and the jockey, horse and the jockey, number one, reality of the market. Number two, time, time, two years, you're spending, is it wise enough to learn C1, which you'll forget anyway. <clears throat> and even then, you'll never become a partner in McKinsey, even if you learned C1 or C2 German. I have not seen one. You can show me one senior level CXO in Germany who has studied or done bachelor's or up till his K-12 in India. <clears throat> and he moved to Germany, learned German, did a German, German speaking job and reached the top. Show me one person. Um, and who's not born in Germany. I know a few people uh, from Siemens who are at the top because even though they were, they were kind of Indian origin, but they were born in Germany, they, they've never lived in India. So obviously I count them as Germans, not as Indians. So anybody who has lived his 20 years of life in India uh, and moved to Germany or 17, 18 years of life and moved to Germany, uh, show me the CXO. CXO means CEO, chief technology officer, chief executive officer, and so on. So these kinds of positions for a mid-size to a large company, show me that. So you cannot rise above a certain level, even if you know German. Number three, number three, the last point, be very careful whom you're taking advice from. People, it's very easy to make 4K videos. It's very easy to make online courses on Teachable for free and take the money from you guys. The advice is very personalized. It has to be very personalized. For some people, English taught programs are better. For some people, German taught programs are better. For you, what is better depends on your ambition, your goal, your CV, your resume, what you have done till now. And it also depends on situation emotional and financial situation of your parents and family. Keep that in mind. It's very important. Just saying, I'll go to Germany, do a German taught program and get whipped in time. And then I'll come back to India and look for a 15, 20, 30,000 rupee job is not going to make your parents happy. It's not going to make you happy. So choose wisely, get personalized opinion, get personalized advice. There is nothing right. There is nothing wrong at a generic level. You have to get particular, you have to get individual advice based on a lot of different factors. All right, guys. So this is the video today. Maybe it's a little bit long, but I really wanted to do this because there is just a ton of confusion and I do not love confusion. And I do not love confusion when it is in minds of my students. So all the best, have fun, do well.